وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن من محاسن الشريعة وكمال الأخلاق one of the excellence of Islam and the complete etiquette and ethics of Islam is that it gives importance to Al-Inayah to Bil Yatim. It gives importance to the orphan. The orphan is Man Fakada Abahu wa al Bulugh. The orphan is the one who loses his father or she loses her father before she reaches age of puberty. As the Prophet Sallallahu he said, لا يتم بعد الاحتلام There is no orphan after reaching age of puberty. You're not an orphan once you have reached age of puberty. Also what falls under uh, al-yatim or takes the same ruling as the yatim is the child who is below age of puberty but is majhul nasab He doesn't know who his father is. Uh, he takes the ruling of al yatim because he doesn't have a father. No one knows who his father is or um, his father is unknown. Rather, the Majhulu Nesab, the one whose Nesab is not known, his lineage is not known, is actually more greater than the actual orphan because the Majhulu Nesab doesn't actually have a relative. He doesn't have Qaraba. He doesn't have cousins. He also doesn't have uh, siblings and he's alone. Or they are alone if they're more than one. But Islam, it gives great importance to these children. And that is inshallah ta'ala what I want to speak about in this episode. Bi-idhnillahi al-kareem. Kafalatul yatim, Taking care of the orphan. And also in there is the Majhul Nasab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Quran regarding the orphan more than 20 places. And all of those places, Allah ta'ala, He calls to Al Ihsani ilayhim that we are good towards them. And Allah ta'ala, He warns from what? Wa yuhadhiru. Allah warns from min zulmihim to oppress them. Wa li'tida ala amwalihim and to be oppressive and transgressive on their wealth or to take any of their rights. قال الله تعالى, Allah said in the Quran, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِّنْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ In this ayah Allah tabarak wa ta'ala He emphasized al-ihsan ila al-yateen To be dutiful towards the orphan As Allah mentioned in that same ayah To be dutiful towards the parents And towards the relatives Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا When we took mithaq, a covenant, from the people of Bani Israel. What is it? لَا تَعْبُدُونَ You will not worship إِلَّا اللَّهِ except Allah. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ And you'll be dutiful towards your parents. وَذِي الْقُرْبَى And your relatives. وَالْيَتَامَى And the orphans. وَالْمَسَاكِينِ And the poor and the needy. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا Say to the people good. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ Establish the prayer. وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ And give the zakah. ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ After that you have turned. إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِّنْكُمْ Except little from amongst you. وَأَنْتُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ Whilst in a state of complete and utter denial. So this ayah shows us 
that Allah mentioned next to the orphan, the parents. Next to the orphans, Allah mentioned the relatives to be dutiful towards them. Even Allah mentioned in the context of only worshipping Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, Do you not see the one who disbelieves in the day of judgment? فَذَلِكَ this one الذي يدعو اليتيم is the one that forsakes the rights of the orphans. وَلَا يَحُضُّ and he does not urge عَلَى طَعَامٍ miskin. he doesn't encourage and urge other people to feeding the needy. Also Allah تبارك وتعالى he says فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ حَافِظُ بْنُ كَثِيرٍ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ when he commented on that verse he said أَيْ كَمَا كُنْتَ يَتِيمًا فَأَوَاكَ اللَّهُ فَلَا تَقْهَرِ الْيَتِيمًا Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم you used to be an orphan once upon a time and Allah تبارك وتعالى gave you shelter and took care of you فَأَوَاكَ اللَّهُ فَلَا تَقْهَرِ الْيَتِيمًا do not humiliate the orphan do not degrade him do not impose things on him and subjugate him أي لا تذله ولا تنهره but rather what is needed from you is وَلَكِنْ أَحْسِنْ إِلَيْهِ Be dutiful towards him وَتَلَطَّفْ بِهِ And be gentle towards the orphan In that kalam Ibn Kathir's statement finishes there Our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was أَرْحَمُ النَّاسِ بِالْيَتِيمِ He was the most gentle, the most merciful person towards the orphan He was, he had the concept of الرَّعْفَ يعني gentleness, tenderness towards the yatim until he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ana wa kafilu liyatimi kahataini. Me and the one who takes care of the orphan are like this. Wa qala bi isba'ihi. The Prophet did this with his two fingers. As sababat wal wusta. You can see the two fingers are the two closest two fingers. And one is before the other one. You were like that, stuck together. And we're also, I'm just a bit in front of them, but they're very close to me like that. The way those two fingers are. ولذلك سهل بن سعد الساعدي رضي الله تعالى عنه هي said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said أنا وكافل اليتيم في الجنة كه أنا وكافل اليتيم في الجنة هكذا وقال بإصبعه السبابة والوسطى the Prophet did this with his two fingers Bukhari narrated this Muslim narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the same as that which he said in the hadith of سهل بن سعد الساعدي رضي الله تعالى عنه which is كافل اليتيم له أو لغيره أنا وهو كهاتين في الجنة The orphan or other than him I am like that towards him if a person takes gentle care and looks after them The Prophet ﷺ pointed out here that that person is going to be with the Prophet ﷺ in Jannah and that doesn't mean that the person is going to be in the same level as the Prophet in Jannah no because Jannah has what levels the Prophet ﷺ has his own place in Jannah. But what it means is that that person is with the Prophet in Jannah. ولذلك حافظ ابن حجر رحمه الله he said وفي إشارة إلى أن بين درجة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وكافل اليتيم قدر تفاوت ما بين السبابة والوسطى that the distance between this hadith shows he says that the difference between the Prophet and the one who takes care of the orphan is the distance of those two fingers towards one another. وَيَكْفِي فِي إِثْبَاتِ قُرْبِ الْمَنْزِلَةِ مِنَ الْمَنْزِلَةِ أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَ الْوُسْطَى وَالسَّبَابَةِ إِصْبَعْ أُخْرَى The Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned in his hadith these two fingers specifically for a reason. Because what? أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَ الْوُسْطَى وَالسَّبَابَةِ There's no finger in between the wusta and the sababa, these two fingers. لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ uh, there's no between it isba'un a finger. They're stuck to each other. The one who takes care of the orphan and takes care, looks after the orphan, they're going to be like that. Stuck. Just the way those two fingers are close to each other, you're going to be close to the Prophet like that. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And the difference between you and the Prophet is the distance between these two fingers. If there never came any hadiths regarding the virtue of the orphan except this, لَكَفَى بَيَانًا لِفَضْرِ كَفَالَةِ الْأَيْتَامِ This hadith will be enough for the virtue taking care of the orphan. 
حافظ أبو عمر بن عبد البر حافظ المغرب he said وهذه فضيلة عظيمة this hadith shows a large good virtue a large virtue إلى كل من ضم يتيما إلى مائدة وأنفق عليه من طوله فإذا كان مع ذلك من الذين قالوا if this person has iman and steadfast upon the religion وحسبك بها You see, وحسبك بها فضيلة وقربة من منزل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الجنة وليس بين السبابة والوسطى في في الطول ولا في اللصوق كثير وإن كان نسبة ذلك من سعة الجنة كثيرة. ابن عبد البر رحمه الله is talking about the great virtue of the person who takes an orphan and brings the orphan to his table and gives to the orphan, يعني gives him food to eat, provides for him. But that's with the condition that the person is from the ones who said Allah is my Lord and is steadfast upon the religion. This does not apply for the disbeliever. Then the Imam Rahimahullah he said, this two fingers that the Prophet chose, he tells you the wisdom behind it, that they are the two closest fingers. And there's not much distance between the two, even though in Jannah there's going to be a slight distance. But look how you're going to be. This is something that show you taking care of the orphan and the virtue in it. Ibn Battalin rahimahullah, who's one of the shurrah of Bukhari, he said, حَقٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُؤْمِنٍ يَسْمَعُ هَذَا الْحَدِيثَ أَنْ يَرْغَبَ فِي الْعَمَلِ أَنْ يَرْغَبَ فِي الْعَمَلِ بِهِ لِيَكُونَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ رَفِيقًا لِلنَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم ولجماعة النبيين والمرسلين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين وَلَا مَنْزِلَةَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ أَفْضَلُ مِنْ مُرَافَقَةِ الأنبياء. Ibn Battalin, he said, it is upon every mu'min who hears this hadith to work very hard to push himself so he can be with the Prophet وسلم, in Jannah and to be with other Prophets and the other messengers and there is no station in the Day of Judgment greater than what? أفضل من مرافقة الأنبياء than to be in the companion in the companionship in the gathering of the prophets the one who takes care of the orphan this is what he attains what does it mean to take care of the orphans? it means to provide for the orphan it is to clothe the orphan, orphan. you clothe him, you give him clothing to wear it also means the tarbiya of the orphan, you nurture and cultivate him well, discipline him. You discipline him, you nurture him, you cultivate him upon salah, righteousness, and steadfastness. Many people, they think the kafala to the only means to give food and just feed him and he's so big and he's eaten, that's part of it. But what they also need to know is that they need to nurture his mind and his soul and his heart by nurturing upon Islamic ethics and Islamic etiquettes and Islamic practices, aqeedah, you correct his aqeedah, you correct his salah and the way he prays, you correct his fasting, you tell him to fast, you teach him the manners that a Muslim should be should have, to eat from his closest area, to eat with his right hand. Yani what is required from a parent to do for his child is what you should be doing for this child. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, "Asa'i ala al-armalati wal-miskini kal-mujahidu fi sabili Allah, kal-mujahidu fi sabili Allah." The one who stands up for the affairs of the armala. The armala is a woman, la zawja laha, she has no husband. Either her husband died, or she never got married. She may even have children from that husband that died from her. Anyone who stands up to take care of that woman, she's either a divorcee or She's a, a single woman, never got married in her life, but she has no one to take care of her financially. The word armala, it comes from the word al-irmal, which means al-faqr, which means what? Al it means poverty. This woman is poor because the man that should have taken care of her is no longer there. The person who stay, stands up for the affairs of this woman, the person who stands up for the affairs of this woman and the miskin, is like al-mujahidi fi sabilillah. It's like you're fighting in the cause of Allah. And the narrator said, I think he said, 
He's like a person who's praying and never gets tired. And a person who's fast that doesn't break his fast. Muttafaqun Ali that the hadith is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. Standing up for the affairs of a uh, armala, a woman who has no husband, either she never got married, or her husband died from her, or he divorced her. Standing up for her affairs, and she has no one to take care of her financially. She's really in a state of poverty. Any person who stands up and pro helps that woman, or a miskin, or you take care of a miskin, a person in need, you are like al mujahid fi sabilillah. You are like your jihad in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala. The narrator said, "Wa I think he said the prophet, "Wa kal qaimi also like." The one who stands up at night and prays and doesn't get tired is carrying on. And also a person who's fasting all day and doesn't break his fast. Every day he's fasting. Every night he's not getting tired, he's praying. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that. This really shows us something very, very powerful. Is that if you stand up for the affairs of these two, you're going to get a very high place. وَقَصَّائِمِ لَا يُفْطِرُوا Allahu Akbar Ibn Battalin rahimahullah He mentioned something very powerful regarding that particular hadith in Bukhari when he commented on it He said مَنْ عَجَزَ عَنِ الْجِهَادِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The person who's unable to fight in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He can't وَعَنْ قِيَامِ اللَّيْلِ He can't stand up at night وَصِيَامِ النَّهَارِ And he can't fast in the daytime فَلْيَعْمَلْ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ Act upon this hadith You can't right? You can't fast daytime Okay. You can't pray at night time? No. You can't jihad fi sabillah. You can't. You're not from you have you have a reason not to. Then Fali'amal bihad al hadith. Act upon this hadith. Take care of the armala and take care of the miskin. Well yes Strive to Al Al Aramili wal Masakin. Taking care of these women who are in need. They have no one to take care of them. Well Masakin and the poor. Why? لِيُحْشَرَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ So you can be risen, you can be brought out يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ The Day of Judgment فِي جُمْلَةِ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ That you can be brought out the Day of Judgment with the Mujahideen دُونَ أَنْ يَخْطُوَ فِي ذَلِكَ خُطْوَةِ Without you taking any step in the battlefield أو أن ينفق درهما Or without even you giving out one dirham for the sake of Allah You see أو يحشر so he can be brought out That you can be brought out With the people who are fasting Excessively Every day they're fasting And they are also um, uh, Praying To be resur resurrected with these people To be brought out with these people Act upon this hadith And that you can get their daraja, their position By implementing this hadith Two people you just have to take care of. The armala or the aramil and the misakin. You take care of them. If you take care of the armala and the miskin, you are going to receive that reward. Wallahi, that is a great virtue. Whoever Allah gives it subhanahu wa ta'ala, they've been given something very great. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He mentions أن رجلا شكى إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قسوة قلبه. A man came to the Prophet said, يا رسول الله ما heart is darkened, it's tainted. I, I'm struggling. My heart is قسوة القلب. I am having a, a hardened heart. What did the Prophet say to him? The Prophet said, إن سحر سليتيم. Wipe your hands through the head of the orphan. وأطعم المسكين. And go and give to the miskin the one in need. الله أكبر. Ahmed narrated this in his Musnad. Go to an orphan. You have Qaswatul Qalb, right? Run your hands in the head of an orphan. And also give وَأَطْعِمِ miskin And give to the poor. What does it mean run your hand through the hair of the orphan? It means be gentle to an orphan. One of the ways to be gentle is run your hands in his head. It is also to be very kind and soft spoken to him. It is also to give food to him. Put that child before you. 
Wallahi, it is one of the things that removes qaswatul qalb, the hardness of the heart. And I know a brother, a particular brother, who um, came to me once and he said, I suffer from darkened heart. My heart is very hard. Qaswatul qalb. What do you advise me? I advised him so many things. And one of the things that he said to me that I really succeeded in, that I found that my heart, mashallah, oh, I was able to do a lot of ibadah after that, is when I took care of an orphan. I took it upon myself to take care of an orphan. That's when I saw, he said, that my heart, the darkness I felt that was on it, the qaswa, the hardness that I felt that my heart had, was going away. I could do more ibadat. I was energetic to do salah at night. I was able to fast Mondays and Thursdays. And that is the reality, wallah. Anyone who is being tested, someone is being tested with a filthy, indecent thing that they do. You have a particular addiction of a particular illness or something, drugs, alcohol, وما إلى ذلك. Try to follow this hadith. امسح رأس اليتيم وأطعم المسكين. And beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you'll see changes. Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه, he mentioned that the Prophet صلى الله عليه said, خير بيت في المسلمين بيت في يتيم يحسن إليه. The best house is the house where there's an orphan who's been taken care of. وَشَرُّ بَيْتٍ And the worst house amongst the houses of the Muslims is a house فِيهِ يَتِيمُ There's an orphan in there. يُسَاءُ إِلَيْهِ Where the people are being very evil towards that orphan. Ibn Majah narrated this وَفِي سَنَدِهِ مَقَالِ And in the chain there is weakness. But the meaning without a shadow of a doubt is correct. One of the signs of a good house is that there is an orphan being taken care of, looked after. And the sign of an evil house that there is an orphan not shown anything. He's been disrespectful, disrespected, not taken care of. And wallahi, what you do to this child and the way that you treat this child, remember that it could possibly one day be وَلْيَخْشَ الَّذِينَ لَوْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّةً ضِعَافًا خَافُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فَلْيَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْيَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا Be fearful of once you leave your children behind that it could possibly happen that someone takes over your children and does not treat them in a good way. Why? Because you are not dutiful towards the orphans that you were taking care of. Or whenever an orphan came to you, you pushed him away. You belittled the orphan. You didn't take care of them. Remember what you do to these orphans is going to be a uquba that can happen to you and your children. Who promised you that you're forever going to live and take care of your children until they grow and reach age of puberty? So be fearful and be conscious of the way that you are towards these orphans. It was narrated from Qatadat ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi rahimahullah. He said, كُنْ لِلْيَتِيمِ كَالْأَبِّ الرَّحِيمِ وَرُدَّ الْمِسْكِينَ بِرَحْمَةٍ وَلِينَ He said, كُنْ لِلْيَتِيمِ Be to the orphan كَالْأَبِ الرَّحِيمِ Like a generous, merciful father. And reject or discipline when the necessity comes and the need comes. Discipline the child بِرَحْمَةٍ وَلِينَ With mercy and gentleness. Even that though you're now forced, you're forced to discipline this child, do it with do it with gentleness and mercy. Ibn Abi Dunya narrated this in his kitab, al-Iyal. So this statement of Qatadat ibn Da'amat al-Sadusi, which is, Kulli al-Yatimi kal-Abi al-Rahimi, is a qa'idah. Jami'ah is a very comprehensive principle that can be used in this chapter of Kafalatul Yatim, taking care of the orphan. Kulli Yatimi Kal Abir Rahimi. Be to this orphan like a merciful father would be. 
always remember that because a father who is merciful, he nurtures his child with appreciation, passion, uh, appreciation, affection, and a lot of attention. He makes sure that his child is given all of that. And you're going to be like that towards the orphan. Hassan al-Basri used to say, There was an orphan that always used to come to the meal and have a meal with Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar called for a meal one day. And he looked for his orphan. He couldn't find him. And this orphan used to always eat with Ibn Umar. And Abdullah ibn Umar in that day when he called for the meal, he said, where's the orphan? They couldn't find him. When Umar ibn Umar finished the meal, the orphan came. Ibn Umar called on food for the orphan. There was nothing they had. And then he ordered for the orphan a dish of meat and rice. He asked for it. فقال, and then he said to him, when the orphan was eating, because he can feel lonely, Ibn Umar said to him, دُونَكَ هَذَا فَوَاللَّهِ مَا غُبِنْتَ He said, this is yours. Wallahi, you, not, you didn't lose out anything. يعني, what you have is exactly what we had as well, just to reassure his heart, to give him, he said, you didn't lose out anything. You lost out nothing whatsoever. And then Hassan al-Basri said, وَابْنُ عُمَرٍ وَاللَّهِ مَا غُبِنَا Rather you, Ibn Umar, are the one who hasn't lost out anything. And you're a person who is رَابِحٌ رِبْحًا عَظِيمًا You have really succeeded. Because Ibn Umar said that to the orphan, that you haven't lost out anything, you succeeded, don't worry, there's no problem. He didn't want him to feel bad for not being with Ibn Umar to eat with him. He also didn't want to make it seem like it was a, a burden on him. يعني أخلاق كثيرة you can see from Ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه his statements to the orphan رحمة رضي الله تعالى عنه ولذلك he was known for that Ibn Umar he was what? he was known for being a person who fed the orphans and ate with them this is the companion of a father of a noble companion his father is Umar رضي الله عنه مع ذلك he would make sure he eats with his uh, orphan. It was narrated from Abi Bakr ibn Hafsin. He said, Anna Abdillahi, yani Abdullah ibn Umar, Kana la yakulu ta'aman illa wa ala wa illa wa ala khiwanihi yatimun. Abdullah ibn Umar, he never used to eat food illa wa ala khiwanihi yatimun, except that there was a what? His dish, yani khiwan, is ma yuta'u alayhi ta'am, is where you place the food. There was always Someone there to eat with him. This shows us, brothers and sisters, Hirsu Sahaba, how the Sahabas used to strive على الأيتام, the orphans, وإشراكهم في طعامه, and how uh, specifically Abdullah ibn Umar, how he was working hard to making sure to bring the orphans in when it came to eating with him. And that is what Allah said in the Quran. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا That they feed the food to who? The orphans. They give food to the orphans and the needy and the asir, the captives. They give it to him. وَلِذَلِكَ حَسَنَ الْبَصْرِيُّ said حَمْزَةَ بْنِ نَجِيحٍ أَبِي عَمَّارٍ he said, I heard Hassan al-Basri say, لَقَدْ أَعِيدْتُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ I have known the Muslims. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ مِنْهُمْ لَيُصْبِحُ A man would wake up in the morning. فَيَقُولُ He would say to his family as soon as he wakes up. He will say to his family, أَهْلِيَّ يَا أَهْلِيَّ يَا أَهْلِيَّ My family, my family. يَتِيمَكُمْ يَتِيمَكُمْ Your orphans, your orphans. يَا أَهْلِيَّ My family. يَا أَهْلِيَّ مِسْكِينَكُمْ Needy, miskinakum, your needies, the ones who are in need. Your poor, your poor. Jarakum, jarakum, your neighbors, your neighbors. That's what they would say every single morning. They would say, Yani, yatimakum here means, ahsinu. 
Be dutiful and be good towards the orphans. Be good towards the poor. Be good towards your neighbors. Every single morning, he said, I've known the Muslims of that time to be saying that to everybody. Every day. Al-Imam al-Bukhari narrated that in his kitab, Adab al-Mufrat. Asma bintu Ubaidin, he said, Qultu li ibn Sirin. I said to Ibn Sirin, Indi yatimun, I have an orphan. I have an orphan. What should I do? Qala, he said, Isna'am bihi ma tasna'u bi waladik. Do to this child what you would do for your own child. Idribhu ma tadribu waladaka. Discipline him in that which you would discipline your child with. And Imam al-Bukhari narrated that in Adab al-Mufrad. Yani, what it means is this, is that make sure that you do for this child in terms of food, cleaning, uh, the hygiene of this child, the way you do for your own children. And if there comes the need to discipline, you discipline the child. Some people, they think you can't touch the, uh, uh, the orphan. You, if he does bad, be quiet. He's an orphan and no one touch him. And the orphan turns out to be very bad. No, discipline him. Okay, you discipline the orphan if he does wrong. Because this is not from harming him. It's actually to what? To better him and to make him better. The best type of orphan to take care of, without a doubt, is the orphan that has, is, or, is your own, is for example, a mother who's raising her own orphans. Her husband died and she's ra raising that is better. That child, she gets two reward for it. Based on the hadith of Zainab, uh, she said, Kuntu fil masjidi faraitu nabi, I saw the Prophet I was in the masjid and I saw the Prophet. The Prophet said, Tasaddaqna, he said to the women, give out. Walaw min kunna, even if it's from your, your, um, your jewelries that you wear. Wa kana Zainab tunfiqu ala abdillahi. Zainab, she used to provide for her husband Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. She used to provide for Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. She said, look, I'll take care of you financially. Go and study and learn the religion. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. وَأَيْتَامٍ فِي حِجِرِهَا And she used to also take care of orphans that were in her house. So she said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, can you go and ask the Prophet this for me? If I can provide, if this تَصَدَّقَنَا وَلَوْ مِنْ حُلِيُّ كُنَّا Give the sadaqah. If the sadaqah can apply on you, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, which is my husband, and the children. Abdullah Mas'ud became a bit shy. He said, I feel shy to go to the Prophet and ask him this question. Why don't you go and ask? She said, فَانْطَلَقْتُ إِلَى النَّبِي I went to the Prophet. فَوَجَدْتُ مَرَأَةً مِنَ الْأَنصَارِ I saw a woman from the people of Ansar, عَلَى الْبَابِ She was standing at the door. حَاجَتُهَا مِثْلُ حَاجَتِي Her question was the same as my question. فَمَرَّ عَلَيْنَا بِلَالٌ Bilal went by. فَقُلْنَا I said to Bilal, سِلِّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ Ask the Prophet for us that if we can give to our um, husbands and our orphans that we're taking care of. But don't tell, she said. وَلَا تُخْبِرْ بِنَا Don't tell her. It was us. They were shy. فَدَخَلَ فَسَأَلَهُ Bilal entered and he asked a question. Then the messenger said, من هما? Who are these two women that are asking the question? The Prophet Bilal then said, Zainab. It was Zainab she was asking the question. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, أَيُّ الزَّيَّانِبِ Which of the Zainabat that are out there, which one is it? And then he said, إِمْرَأَةُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ يعني The wife of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. The Prophet said, yes, of course. She gets two reward if she gives the sadaqah to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and the orphans. أَجْرُ الْقَرَابَ She's taking care of her uh, qaraba, her relative. وَأَجْرُ sadaqa, And she gets the reward of the sadaqah that she gives. So the sadaqah that's given to the family is better than the sadaqah that's given outside. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that. So a mother who has lost her husband when her children were very little and she takes care of those children, she provides for them, she gets two reward. أَجْرُ الْقَرَابَةِ and أَجْرُ sadaqah. So she is the highest. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentioned, as an Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih, that a woman came to Aisha radiallahu anha, Tahmil ibn Tayni, she had two daughters. Aisha said, فَأَطْعَمْتُهَا ثَلَاثَ تَمَرَاتٍ I gave her three dates, two for your daughters and one for you. So what the woman did was, فَأَعْطَتْ كُلَّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِنْهُمَا تَمَرَةً She gave the two dates to her two daughters. وَرَفَعَتْ إِلَى فِيهَا And she lived to her mouth. يعني فيها أي فمها She raised one of the dates to her mouth. لِتَأْكُلَهَا So she can eat it. As she was about to eat it, فَاسْتَطْعَمَتْهَا إِبْنَتَهَا Her daughter asked for the date. Looked at her, gave her a look. And Imam, I want the date. 
she then split the date into two in which she wanted for herself the one that she wanted to eat she gave it to her two daughters Aisha then said her story her re- what I saw from this woman fascinated me I told the Prophet what this woman did فقال, he then said to me إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَوْجَبَ لَهَا بِهَا الْجَنَّةِ Due to this action that this woman did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take her jannah. أَوْ أَعْتَقَهَا بِهَا مِنَ النَّارِ Or because of this action, Allah has freed her neck from the hellfire. She was raising two orphans. Her children were orphans, as the narrations mention. Just the fact that she gave two dates to her orphan kids. And then added another one onto it for both of them. Allah is going to make her from the dwellers of jannah. And Allah is going to distance, or Allah freed her neck from the hellfire. This shows you kafalatul yatim, taking care of the orphans. What I want to finally conclude with is mention that there have been great scholars in Islam who are orphans. First of all, our Prophet ﷺ was an orphan. Allah says in the Quran, Alam yajid ka yatiman fa'awa. Nabiullah Muhammad was an orphan. And great scholars of Islam were orphans. Like Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah. He was an orphan. Imam al-Shafi'i was an orphan. Imam al-Awza'i, Imam al sham was an orphan. Imam al-Bukhari was an orphan. And many more other scholars were orphans. All of them, they grew up without a father figure around. And this, the fact that they were orphans, it didn't harm them. Ibn al-Jawzi mentions in the manaqib of Imam Ahmed that Imam Ahmed's mother, she used to provide for Ahmed, rahimahullah. And she used to discipline him. And she used to nurture him. And she would say to him, Ana unfiqu alayka. Ahmed, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to give to you. Go and learn. Whatever you need. And Ahmed ibn Hanbal would go and seek knowledge. And she would take care of his finance and what he needed. Rahimahullah. And she used to, his mother, Ahmed's mother, Rahimahullah, she used to pay money for men to come, yani, who were known as the Mu'addibim. They, their job was to discipline a child. They teach the child how to sit down, what to say, what not to say, how to talk, how to, yani she paid finance and money so Ahmed rahimahullah to discipline him. Rahimahullah rahmatan wa si'ah. That's how he became Imam Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Shafi'i as Humaydi mentioned, Humaydi Abdul Ibn Zubair. He said, Sami'atu Shafi'i, I heard an Imam Shafi'i say, Kuntu yatiman, I was an orphan. Fi hijr ummi in my mother's house. My mother had no money to give to the teacher. And if I, because I couldn't give the money to the teacher, he accepted that I take his place whenever he can't come. And I would teach the children. And Imam Al-Muzaniyu, Ismail Al-Muzani, student of Imam Shafi'i, he said, Shafi'i said, حفظت القرآن and memorized the Quran. وأنا ابن سبع سنين. I was only seven years old. وحفظت الموطأ أنا memorized موطأ بني مالك. وأنا ابن عشر سنين. I was only ten years old. Who helped him in doing that? His mother. الإمام الجليل عبد العزيز بن باز رحمه الله. نشأ يتيما. He was an orphan. Grew up as an orphan. وفقد بصره أن بصره. He lost his eyesight قبل بلوغ العشرين before he was twenty years of age. He lost his eyesight when he was eighteen. And we know رحمه الله. The Imam he was and the virtue this man had, Rahimahullah. So mothers who have children who are orphans, inshaAllah ta'ala, remember your children can become scholars. They can become ulama. May Allah make our children scholars and people of knowledge. I'm going to stop there, inshaAllah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan. And Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like, 
or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.